Guess what we're drinking? 40s! Drinking 40s tonight. I'm drinking 40s. You guys are drinking... I'm drinking a 40. You guys are drinking really tall beers. Hey, man. That's true. It's still I in mean, a 40-ounce glass, so it's all good. True. It that's still true. has the unique look you know of a 40. It looks like a, you know, like a Kanye West shoe or something, mm. you know? It has a fucking weird-ass shape. Dude. I'm over here on the Colt 45. Danny's drinking a Mickey's over there. Straight up. Yeah, those are two true 40s. Yo, High Life, I think, is the one beer that gives me, like, mad beer shits. <laughs> Bro, what's the champagne of beers? I t- I love High Life, and I'm not I'm gonna stop drinking it. But I notice when I drink High Life predominantly, my stomach's fucked up the next day. Yo, it's like you pop champagne and you pop that butthole when you drink the champagne of beers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it just pops the cork on that butthole. That's right. You know, yeah. you gotta make sacrifices in life, dude. It's okay. It's just like this whole Christmas, I've been eating uh, tamales, even though they give me acid reflux and. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but I made the sacrifice because people gave me tamales. Because they're good. And I love them. And it's okay. Even the spicy ones. Yeah. And someone said drink them with milk, but I don't drink milk. Huh? That sounds weird. Or eat them with milk, sorry. Yeah, milk sucks. I haven't drank milk in milk, s- milk 30 years. Milk is so fucking nasty, dude. <laughs> so bad for you, too. I like it with cereal, but it's just like, it fucks me up. Yo. And I never noticed it till I didn't drink milk for like a month, and then I tried it again, and I'm like, oh, wowzers. It's because you shouldn't be drinking it. That's but what yo, milk does to you, huh? A dark chocolate almond milk? <sighs> That's a treat, baby. Ooh, I drink yeah, that all day. Up. I drink that all day. I haven't got to work because I used to, I was vegan back in the day for like seven years, and then afterwards, I just never drank milk again, but I would always have it in my, I don't eat a lot of cereal, but whenever I had cereal, I'd have it in there. Yeah. And then finally, I got to the point, whoops. Finally, I got to the point where I was just like drinking that unsweetened almond milk in my cereal. Yeah. And the shit's fire, dude. Yeah. You don't even oh, fucking notice the difference, honestly. Same shit. Like, it's so fucking good, man. And if you guys didn't notice, Scott Buchanan is here this evening. Oh, yeah. What's up, y'all? He was uh, supposed to just be a guest tonight, but Josh got the flu last night. And, uh, Fucker. He, he tried to fight through it and come on the podcast. And I said, if you come to the studio, I won't be there. <laughs> exactly. We do the podcast. So uh, trying to die. We made a compromise, and here we are, episode forty. Episode Bum-ba-bum. forty, the forty episode. The forties, you know. We like doing themes, I guess. That's our thing. Yeah, I've noticed that. I think it works out, though. I mean, I think we're still kind of trying to f- put our feet where they belong, <laughs> and uh, going with the theme. I think none of us are against it. Especially like we did the Christmas theme, now we're doing a 40s theme. Yeah, I guess those are the only two themes we've done. The vodka pod was kind of a theme, but we're never going to do that again. <laughs> yeah, never. Just wait till we get to episode 69, bud. Yeah. Ayo! <laughs> it's going to be a greasy one. Yo, yeah, but on a real, wait till we get to episode 52 because we're going to have a big ass party. Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. We're going to rent out a warehouse, do a live podcast and shit. Can't wait. So down shit, for that it. that sounds dope. We got 12 weeks. What is that? Where, where are we at right now? In December, into January, into January. So it'll be like... Uh, it'll be March. Into March? Yeah, Spring that's when we started. Action. It was like March 21st oh, yeah. or something. Dude. Crazy. That's when I want to premiere the video. We should fucking... Oh, I got, I'm, I'm going to start brewing ideas. Mm. I can see the wheels turning now. Yeah, we dude. could do a lot of shit with that, man. Mm-hmm. The podcast anniversary along with the video premiere. Do a live with... podcast at the video premiere. Oh, we could just do oh, a We're going to fucking nail it. And we could have a show... Like, we could just do so much with that, man. Yeah. Well, this video premiere is going to be epic, man. Just oh, got yeah. better. Yep. There you go. I just like the new uh, Issue 25 release, too. That shit was done. Oh, you like it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, we uh, we sacrificed a lot because Grant had to work at Yellow City that night, so we all had to wake up at fucking 7 in the morning and drive out to Spearman. How the fuck does Spearman have a park like that? It's the <laughs> fucking dopest park, right? Stupid. I don't know. I think some kid's dad, like, put up the money to get it built. That sounds very plausible because, you know, in those small communities like that, there's, like, you know, ranching money or oil yeah. money or something like that. So yeah, it's for sure some oil money. Somebody out there has probably got a kid that's, like, hip and wants to skate. And he's like, Dad, there's nowhere to skate around here. And he's like, well, fuck it. I'll just build you a park. Yeah. All right, son. I'll get you a skate park built. <laughs> Shit. That park is fucking fun, man. You guys can go out there on your wheelie sticks and get down. <laughs> <laughs> that just shows how bad Amarillo is at making skate parks. Yeah. Because ours is a shell of what that park is. It's not even close to what that park is. Yeah. Well, Either one of ours. Ours is just 
was just fucked up in the design process. I yeah. think it was like just kind of like let's get let's get one built, let's do this, and it's just fucking all over the place, and it's none of it's exactly where it needs to be. It's just like half of three different things. Yeah, I think legit if Martin Road and John Stiff were combined, it'd be one cool park. I agree. Because they'd have a lot more open space for like shit that Martin Road doesn't have open space for, or, like quicker yeah. runway and shit. And then you still got the bowl, which yeah. is the bowl's dope, you know, like yeah. But the big giant fucking <laughs> yeah, the full who, <laughs> the full pipe, like fucking come on, what buddy. the fuck is that? It's like yeah, so fucking unnecessary. It's dude. like they just did it to make it an attraction, but like nobody gives a shit about it. It's like okay, you have a full pipe, cool. You have one of the only full pipes in Texas, cool. <laughs> like nobody everybody's like all right i'm not gonna bring my kids this year fucking full pipe yeah it's not yeah. like it's not like pros are like oh we gotta go hit that full yeah. pipe because it's not even yeah. a legit full pipe it's like it's like you can do that right there but it's so sketch it's like a tilt-a-whirl yeah car and it's like you go up in there and if you don't hit that at the right angle and you go high enough it's gonna buck your ass right out <laughs> oh for sure <laughs> yeah. like you can carve really high up in that little back 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 part but i mean you can't hit a full pipe on it. You can just carve high. Yeah, if someone yeah. did the fucking loop in there, I'd my mind would be fucking blown for yeah. that. Oh, that's the that would be the biggest loop ever done. Yeah. Easily. Like the scariest one too, for sure. Yeah. I've seen plenty of people try to carve really high and just slam hard. And then they're just like, Alright, I'm over. I'm over skateboarding. Yeah. I'm gonna retire. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna retire. Focus on my board and I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, for real. Throw my board in the trash can. <laughs> That's the biggest fucking move you can make when you're fucking at a session. You throw your board away. You know you're fucking pissed off. Yeah. yeah. You ever do that? Throw your board away? I've never thrown my board away. I've I did stomped it, it like a few times. That's I, know, I know Trey will stomp his board and just throw it in the middle of a field. Like Dude, at, almost every time he skates. So, uh, so the day after the holiday pod last week, we had a Chrismica party at my house. And we got so fucking drunk, dude. There was videos I saw the next day. We're fucking skating in my living room. (laughs) And we got to put this shit on the fucking podcast. So I guess there was a video going around. Don't remember who made the bet, but somebody bet Danny that you wouldn't do what? Kick flip or heel flip? Oh, I saw that. Kick flip first try? Five times. Yeah, he had five. I can hear you in the background pretty predominantly. If I, I didn't do. Kick. I've never seen Danny do a kickflip in my fucking life, and he did it. What did you do? A second try? Yeah, dude. What's this fucking timestamp? Yeah. Did he land? And did, is that the one where you landed? You went backwards. You shot it. I, that was whenever I, I, I kicked out. Whenever I tried to heel flip. That's right. That's I right. On it, but then I, so, I saw that. Okay, so all that happened, unbeknownst to me, I'm fucking blacked out. Don't remember any of that whatsoever. I wake up the next day, and I'm cleaning well first off before i went to bed drunk nick took care of sober nick cleaned the whole house took the trash out did all the dishes woke up the next day there was fucking wood chips all over the floor and i'm like what the fuck is this from like looking to see like maybe my wood floor got chipped up somewhere or some shit apparently trey tried to do a trick and i was like he missed it and i was like stomp your board and then i apparently got everybody in the party to chant Stomp your board, stomp your board, stomp your board. And he stomped the shit out of it. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Don't remember it. Wish there was a video. That's fucking hilarious. Don't remember that at all. I remember hearing him stomp his board and then stomp in every other part. So he stomped the center, stomped the tail, stomped the nose. And I just remember sitting in the kitchen being like, God damn, dude, they're going hard in there. The fact, <laughs> the fact that no one hit the wall, no one hit all the presents under the Christmas tree, and no one fucking hit the little stand where, like, all my records and shit are. Right. It yeah. is unbelievable to me. <clears throat> I mean, Danny almost broke your table, but that's fine. And the table, too. The table's glass. It might, It's yeah. black, and it doesn't look like it's glass, but it's black glass. <laughs> yeah, and Danny slipped out into it <laughs> Dude, so hard. That's a miracle that thing didn't break. Yeah. That was I would have been man. bummed, man. I don't even remember where I got that thing. Wow. It, was, it was a good night, man. It was fun. You'll see. This fucking, the video of Danny doing the kickflip will for sure be on this video podcast. And I'm going to probably make that the Instagram clip too so everyone can see it. There, there we go. go. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Love to see it. You love to see it. Yeah, that night was fucking insane, man. 
Yeah, we were going to come over, but we had the fucking... We had the party for Yellow City at the restaurant that night where we do our, like, what we call Secret Satan, which is, like, our Secret Santa. Hell yeah. And it gets pretty fucking wild. And then um, just everybody's drinking and and then, like, everybody's smoking, like, insane amounts of weed. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, when you do, like, a party like that at a restaurant, is it just a free-for-all on, like, the taps and shit? Or no, like- no. It's, like, we, like, it's, it's, it's BYOB. We have everybody, okay. like, bring your own shit. Um. You know, we might, like, taste some beers or something like that. But for the most yeah. part, everybody brings their own shit. Like, Ian brought a bottle of Henny. I fucking, saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I brought a bottle of Knob, and then everybody brought, like, miscellaneous fucking <sighs> beers and shit. Yeah, but so you guys got shitty for Everybody sure. was, like, just, <laughs> it's like, the dudes you don't see while out in the crew, like, were all over there fucking drinking a shitload of Hennessy and getting fucking twisted. And Those are the like, best times. I know, dude. right? <laughs> So, yeah, needless to say, we were going to come by your party afterwards, but I was, like, packing shit up. We were kind of cleaning up the restaurant, and then I was like, let's head to Nick's. Ren's like, no, you're going home. You're not driving anywhere. And I was like, (laughs) I'm more stoned than drunk. It's all good. She's like, like, no, you've been drinking whiskey. Here in about 30 minutes, you're going to be fucking tired, hungry, and ready to go home. And I'm not going to be somewhere at a party where I want to hang out and stay, and you're going to be fucking bumming me out trying to leave. And I was like... (laughs) I was like, honestly, man, I just want to go to the party and go to Thai House. <laughs> and she's mm-hmm. like, fuck that. Because <laughs> if anybody knows where Thai House is, it's out it's off on the, boulevard. the boulevard, right? Yeah, okay, Eastern. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. Eastern and the boulevard. Out there by the airport and shit. And it's like kind of our thing on like Saturday nights and shit when I'm not DJing. If we just go get a couple of drinks at Pondicetta and then go to R&R or something. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll go out to Thai House and get, you know, fucking Pad Ki Mao or whatever and shit, sticky rice. And then. It's always like the drive out there is all ambitious and shit because we still we're not drunk when we head out there, but we've had some drinks and been like we feel like energetic and shit. And then after we go out there and eat and everything kind of catches up with us, the drive home is always like just uh, fucking feels like forever. <laughs> Dragon like, just want to get. How late is that place open to? Till three, I think. What? what? Oh, dude, if y'all haven't been to Thai House, it's a fucking experience, dude. It's like. It's like, wow. so you go out there and say, we always break off the bar and go to Thai house around like, you know, fucking 12, 30, one o'clock. Yeah. They'll be fucking like full families there of like Hispanic kids and shit and their parents. And then you have all these fucking, you know, like quasi home bum people over there playing the slot. They have the gambling machines over in the corner. <laughs> they got two pool tables. They serve fucking alcohol of a full bar. Damn. Dude. And dude, the food's pretty fucking, you know, for what it is, the food's good. It's yeah. not the best, you know, Thai food in town, but it's, 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 it's edible, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's better than most like the, the little dive places, but dude, and especially for anything after fucking 11 PM. Dude, 100%, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you can go get their, men- their menus, you know, it's pretty comprehensive for, you know, the Thai favorites, like, you know, stick your ice, beef jerky, you know, papaya salad, all the fucking, the main usual suspects of noodle dishes and shit. Yeah. But aside from the food and shit and being able to eat Thai food that late in town, it's like, the spectacle of what's going on there is always fucking crazy. <laughs> I can't imagine. Sounds dude. amazing. We're going to have to hit that up some night. Dude. dude, yeah, it's definitely. So, like, dude, Forrest and Maitland and them were all talking about it one night. And Ren and I are like, we've never been out there. So we fucking, Forrest and Ren and I all fucking trekked out there. And I was like, I was skeptical the whole fucking way. Then <laughs> yeah. we walk in there and we're like, okay, it's legit. It looks legit. And then sit down and get the menu and i'm like okay cool i mean the fucking menu looks you know i can see all the favorites are there and then we order some fucking shit food comes out and i'm like you know drunk me is like oh this is really fucking good but sober me is like ah it's good for what what it is you know so yeah i don't want to give it any false praise but you know it's fucking it's definitely worth the trip i know i've eaten at thai house before but i just never knew they were open till like Three or four in the morning. Yeah, that's, dude. That's hella sus, insane, bro. Hella man. sus. Yeah. It's fucking God crazy. Damn. <laughs> but it's open for all those uh, motherfuckers leaving the after hours clubs on the boulevard and dude, shit. Dude, straight up. <laughs> yeah. Club that's Dubai good. and that's fucking. Good business, baby. <laughs> my club. Dubai, dude. I saw that shit on my way to Martin Road one day and I was like, oh, wow. Dude, yeah. We, uh. Club Dubai. We hit either trees or Dong Fong, like a lot of times, like during the week, you know, to grab like certain things, like, you know, if we're doing noodle dishes or whatever. Yeah. Just to grab the legit Asian ingredients. And sometimes we'll hit Tacos Garcia over there on the boulevard, grab breakfast and shit. And one day, Ren and I were driving out, and we saw a Club Dubai and shit. And she's like, what the fuck is that? I go, that's where we're going to drink on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine oh, the yes, shit that dude. goes down in that place. Dude. 
Guaranteed someone's getting shot Dude, every night. Dude, 100%. Have, every have you night. ever drive down the boulevard and seen all the bars? Yeah. Like, they're, they're just so wild. It's like, is yeah. this really legit like a bar? And it's like, dude, the space is like a fucking a glorified utilities space. <laughs> yeah. They fucking slap a fucking either some shitty graffiti on it's or a always, fucking. <laughs> it's always fucking bad graffiti, dude. <laughs> yeah. Or like they print it like that Club Dubai is like a printout that they fucking shellac to the wall of some like, you know, just cheesy fucking graphic thing. You know, like, <laughs> and then you, when you, you drive by those places when they're in business, like Jesse said, dude, they're so, it looks so crazy. It's like, oh, dude. It's ridiculous. I'm yeah. always like, what's going on inside there? Is yeah, that, is that the imagine. fucking actual logo? Is that is that the one in Amarillo? Because yeah, please save that and fucking send it to me so we can put that shit on here. Dubai nightclub. Yeah. We're wow. nowhere near Dubai. What's that Mexican club like on Buchanan, like towards the towards the boulevard? It's like Coco Loco. I don't think it's Coco. Coco Locos. Is it Coco Locos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a group, they let us, um, whenever we have the graffiti jams, they let us use that wall. Not us. I mean, if they usually yeah. like Parrish and Jordan let them hook up that wall. So, yeah. yeah, there's some pretty dope pieces on that wall. I right remember now. Uh, when I worked at Party Stop, like we would do the liquor for bars and shit, and the dude who owned Coco Locos would come in there, maybe like, I don't know, once every three weeks, and the only things he would ever buy was fucking Admiral Nelson's coconut rum, uh, like knockoff crown. What the fuck is it called? Uh, Potter's Crown. It's like fucking. Dude, a lot of people swear by that now. shit because like, it it tastes a lot like Crown, dude. People are like, I'm like, but dude, it's a Crown's fucking horrible, dude. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna derail like, your story. No, I don't like whiskey in general, so fucking go for it. Uh, bash, bash, the bash, bash Crown Royal all day. <laughs> yeah, I like I like whiskey. I just want to derail you from what you were wanting. No, up you're for. all good. I can't fucking remember what else he would buy, but anyway, he'd buy like six bottles every three weeks, and I'm just like, you on a bar like. How much fucking business are you really having? I didn't fucking ever understand it. Yeah. That sounds like a money laundering thing where it's like, yeah, hey, we're not really doing that much business. But it we're for gonna... sure was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's He'd a lot of money laundering too. going <laughs> yeah, exactly. on. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a big thing in Amarillo is money laundering. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. Yeah. Like even the place, <clears throat> like people, like the restaurant that we shared the parking lot with, uh, Saigon, it's a yeah. huge fucking space. And I knew, I'm, I can think of like five to 10 people off the top of my head that, that eat there kind of regularly and say that it's really good. I've never eaten there personally, but I'm like, dude, I know from being a business owner that a space like that, the overhead on it, because it's probably twice the size of our restaurant. Yeah, it's huge. And, dude, it is empty all the time. Like, when we're really busy, our overflow goes into their parking lot, and they get fucking pissed. So I'm always like, how the fuck are you keeping this place open? Yeah. I like eating at that place just because I like pho, but – I don't eat there that much. Vicky. Like, if I eat pho, I'll go to, like, Cafe Boulevard or pho 64. 84. Vicky likes to eat at Saigon. She likes pho and all kinds of shit, too. I'm allergic to seafood, so Asian food sketches me out. I eat veggie fried rice no matter where we go. So right. <laughs> every place is the fucking same to me, basically. But <clears throat> didn't that place used to be fucking Speed's Pool Hall? Was Saigon? That, was that Speed's right there? I think I it thought... was, dude. Really? Uh, I remember like being there as a child with my parents. I I I fucking you know like that's I was, why it's so big. It used to be a fucking pool hall. That makes sense. I mean, mm. that's the same space. That's crazy because I remember speeds when I was a kid. I'm a little older than you guys, but yeah, that place was like a fucking meth den. Yeah, and my parents. <laughs> oh, speeds was sorry, mom. My parents <laughs> not just were both not. on meth. <laughs> they per- no. they sorry, they mom. Partook. Dude, uh, oh, that is where it was, huh? Oh shit. Damn, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, for sure. I I fucking distinctly remember like the layout of the place and everything, dude. Yeah, it's like because it I'd go there to play like fucking video games as yeah, a kid. I would too. There would be like, a, I think a couple times there was some kind of function there where I ended up going there for some reason, like to hang out and play games and shit. And I was like, this place is pretty cool. Yeah, as a kid, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But seeing like I remember later in, when I got older in that place before it closed, it's like fully sketch. Oh yeah. You know what place I've always thought, like, I wonder what the fucking inside of this place is like. What's that? The Amarillo Tavern. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Amarillo it's Tavern. on the boulevard, and it seems like it's the most throwed back fucking, like, sketchy bar ever. Beats me. What's the cross street? <laughs> do, you, do you know yeah. like, the whereabouts Danny's of about to pull Let's him see. up. Let's see. Click the fucking map, Danny. The map? I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah. 
it's like the front doors are like barn doors. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I bet that place is sketchy being inside of it. So was it 2624 East Amarillo Boulevard? So pull it up dude, on the map. 2624 okay. East, that's deep, bro. That's before Eastern, but not quite to Eastern. So, dude. Yeah. That place has some barn doors on it, man. And I'm just like, I guarantee there's some sketchy stuff going down in Bro, there. Pinch and zoom. What you doing? <laughs> kind of like the old. Uh... <laughs> there it is. Uh, okay, I see. So like Nelson. Yeah, no, it's right before Grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, you could tell. Tricky's bar. That sounds sketchy Ooh, too. <laughs> yeah, all, everything around there just tacos, <laughs> Don Miguel. Like yeah, tacos, Don Miguel. I bet I it's fucking fire. Is that place good? I don't know. I'm just uh, fucking joking. <laughs> it goes hard. It sounds like it would be. I know exactly where that is, dude. Yeah, for real. Mm. Roots. So there's Dong Fong that we go to. I oh, to okay, get yeah. Shit so it's just a little bit further down. But that place wow. just looks like a place that it goes down at. And I've always wondered. You should pop in there sometime. Right, go hit it up, dude. I don't know about that. Go get stabbed, I'm still dude. working up my balls. <laughs> you need a day off of work? Go get stabbed, bro. I got to fucking just go, like, Put a white T-shirt on, roll around in the dirt, and then, <laughs> then I'll walk in and I'll look normal. Whoa! With, with your fucking boots. I'm on. just saying, I ain't talking shit, but that's just. Oh, just look, it's actually a nice establishment in there. He- hello. That's hot, bro. Oh, I was like, damn. I was like that place looks pretty good. I'm like, well, I fucking feel like an asshole now. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, <laughs> just a super nice place, and I'm just fucking dragging just, it through the dirt. Yeah, just dogging it on the fucking airwaves right now. Man, fuck off, bro. Though, for real. While we're on that subject, <laughs> I've we, only been there one time. Do I used we to have work one here? there. Yeah, oh, Hofbrau yeah. is local. Oh. Hofbrau, yeah, but but there's Hofbrau is a common name that a bunch of restaurants use. Oh, really? Yeah, for real. It's like like a like a weird like like stereotypical German name for like a steakhouse because like uh. down on Sixth Street in Austin, there's a Hofbrau. I've seen a few of them. It's not original at all. Well, even like Braceros, I don't think all the Braceros in town are connected with each other. I think what I heard really? one time was because I knew, I knew the, I met the dude Jaime that owns the one on Bell and owned one. Of them. I think there was a split in the family, and then half of the family took these, and half of the family took those kind of thing. Oh, well, yeah, because they got one on Paramount now, but I don't yeah. think it's the same Braceros. Paramount, where at? Yeah, like Param- next to. Oh yeah, Tyler's that place barbecue. that's been a million things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always changing. It we looked to, at that. It space. used to be fucking uh, Paco's Tacos for yeah, a minute. Yeah, <laughs> right before it was Paco's Tacos, we looked at it before we we went to the Wolfwood location of Yellow City, and did it was like crazy expensive, and the fucking layout was super weird. Yeah, that layout in there is fucking. And I'm yeah. like, why is a, a, a new restaurant in this building every year? And they're like, well, we don't know. It's just kind of a weird location. I'm like, you're on the fucking interstate. Yeah, dude. like yeah. literally right off I-40. That's so funny. much traffic. I feel like that place could be a bar or something. Maybe no, not even that. It's just the layout. The layout probably does fuck it over, huh? I feel like a bar can survive anywhere if you do it right. I agree. I feel like bad concept restaurants, like, if it's just not really fucking good, like, if you don't have, like, the perfect space, you're not going to do good. Because, like, yeah. like, people told us when we moved into our space, they're like, y'all are on the wrong side of Wolfland. It's fucking a million things have never succeeded in that spot. And we're like, okay, well, we're going to try it. Yeah. And we're doing great. So Hell yeah. Been there, what, four years? Uh, Coming up on four. We've been open nice. a total, like, a little past, I think a little more than six years, so. Hell yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. Can't believe you've already been in that one space almost four years, though. That's crazy, too. Yeah, dude. Especially because I, I spent a year over at Six Car fucking wasting my time there. And then, so, <laughs> like, coming back now and just seeing it and be, then hearing people say, like, oh, y'all been in this space almost four years. I'm like, I fucking lost a year. So it just seems like yeah, even crazier to me. Yeah, for sure. It's just cool to see, like, any restaurant like that because – I know even still nowadays, I'll be like, you, yeah, I'm going to go to Yellow City Street Food. And they're like, where's that at? And I'm like, yep. you don't know where that's at? Like, uh, I thought everybody knew where Yellow City's at. Did we have- but it's getting more common and common for people to be like, oh, yeah, that place is great. That place is great. But at the beginning, it was like nobody knew where it was. Nobody knew what it was, anything. But now it's more common, more common, more common for the common person to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's we have people... Every week that have never like local people that have never been there, never heard of it, have no idea what we're trying to do, and then like a large part of our clientele is also travelers. People fucking 
we have travelers that are people from like New York and California that are more aware of where we're at and what we're doing than some people here in town because damn that's cool because they look online and shit they, yeah they're they're looking for vegan food they're looking for like you know craft beer or like like a craft kitchen and they'll yeah. find shit they'll be on a road trip we have people come in sometimes they're like I logged in y'all's fucking y'all's shit on my Google Maps in California because I knew I was passing through here and drove straight here and I'm like it's fucking crazy that's awesome dude yeah it's weird. Yeah, a lot. Of, that's becoming a lot more common though, where people are planning their trips around what they're going to eat too. Though that's, that's yeah. how we travel for sure. I mean, yeah. In any time I'm anywhere, the first thing I look up is craft beer, and then I'm looking up like yeah, like a craft kitchen or any sort of shit like that, like a nice little local joint that does unique shit. Yeah. Any anywhere I'm at, I want to fuck. I'm I'm not like it. Fucking drives me insane when people travel and go to like chain restaurants. Yeah, that's. It's it's asinine for like real. like I'm all cool with like you know fucking hitting in and out burger or whatever the fuck like it's all good whatever but yo fucking go go explore like you know the little fucking unique joints in the yeah. city that's the biggest like shit you're never gonna ever ever fucking have again yeah. ever yeah something that's unique to the city not like a fucking Chili's you know that's just like every time we go yeah. somewhere every time I've gone with you Nick we always find a brewery and then you know we'll go support the brewery yeah you know what i mean buy buy a fucking glass or you know whatever whatever it is but it's more it's more special when you're doing something that's only there that brewery is only there yeah you know yeah so you get experience their beer firsthand out of the tap yeah like uh especially like when i went to new york obviously new york's super unique there's fucking thousand goddamn places everywhere in the world but I was like, looked up shit. I was like, I specifically want to go to this place. It serves this type of food. This place that serves this type of food and these breweries. And they were all around the fucking boroughs and shit. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I'm planning my whole trip around going to these restaurants and yeah. these fucking breweries. Whatever we do in between, that's cool. For real. That's the same way we travel, man. Like, we're, I'm, I got a couple of shows in Tulsa this weekend. And, like, we're going to the Prairie Brew Pub. We're going to American Solera. Oh, yeah. You know, like. I'm happy to go see my friends in Tulsa and play some shows and shit, but half the trip for me and Ren is to go fucking drink and eat and shit. Yeah. So. Do you guys ever go to Stone Cloud when you're out in Fuck OKC? Fuck yes, dude. dude. Jesus Stone Cloud's Christ. so sick. Dude, it blew. I've never been to the brewery, but I've had their beer, and I every time, next time we go to OKC, I can't fucking wait to dude, go out there, it, dude. Uh, last time we were there, it was like, what the fuck, when were we there last? It was like, I think it just right after Halloween or right before Halloween. We went to a guest chef dinner at None Such, and uh, okay. we always go to Prairie. You know, we have a couple of spots in OKC that we always hit, and like we hadn't been to Stone Cloud before we'd heard of it. Yeah, and I was like, "Cool, let's go check it out this time." So we went <clears throat> in the middle of the day and checked it out, and dude, it blew Prairie out of the water for me on this dude. ride, dude. They had us fucking like Imperial Butterfinger. Yeah, stout, some some crazy. of the shit they make, it's like you're giving Prairie Run for their money 100%. for fucking sure. And then uh. Yeah, dude, I was blown away by it. Finger style. That's not it was good. stupid. It was like sixteen percent alcohol. Like, do we 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 drink that in house? We drink a couple other little things, but they had badass. They had a, like a cellar menu. They had all this crazy shit. Oh wow! They had some fifty, sixty dollar beers that were like in thousand milli glasses or bottles and shit that were like, you know, like barrel aged fucking crazy sours or like Damn, Brett Jesus. beers that were like, like they have a crazy like fermentation like uh like secondary fermentation program that was. Like, if we'd have had more coin to blow and been there longer, I was like, we should definitely take down some of these. But some of them were to-go only and shit. Oh. We drank a few things in-house, and then we grabbed a crowler of that Butterfinger Stout, and then a fucking six-pack of this shit called Bruce Lee, which is a fucking, uh, dude, a hazy double IPA. That was so fucking good, dude. It <laughs> was yeah. stupid good. That sounds amazing, man. I mean, Prairie was on point, too, but, like, this yeah. particular trip, like, it was like... Because, I mean... I'm such a big fan of Prairie that, like, I'm constantly got my finger on the pulse of what Prairie's doing. Yeah. And so, like, right. if we go, like, in, in having the restaurant and shit, I can constantly, like, you know, know what's coming out and get it through the spot, you know? So, like, yeah, a lot of shit that people, some people haven't had, I've already had or heard about. And so when I go to the the, the, the OKC Brewery and shit, Ren and I try to drink, like, little four-ounce pours of the whole menu that we haven't had before. And, it, like, they recently changed over to a new brewmaster at the OKC Tap Room. And I don't know if it's just him or what, but they've been doing, like, a lot of sours and stuff. Like, my favorite thing from Prairie is their stouts. Yeah, like, I, I like their, their stouts a lot, too. Their sours are banging, but, dude, like, 
the stouts are where it's at for me, especially in the brewery, getting like yeah. the like the big barrel age, like Nigerian prints and stuff like that that you can't get crowlers of that you have to have there. Yeah. But you know, last time we there, they had a bunch of key lime sours and some like cranberry oh, sours. Amazing. They were good, dude. They were good, but it was like yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm kind of soured out, you know, like. So then we went to Stone Cloud. I was just like, dude, this is a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it's it's really uh, amazing how many like um, dope craft breweries are in Oklahoma City, dude. Yeah, because they have uh, what's the other one? Uh, Rough Tail. Yeah, we got They're a little OKC, right? We, I think so. We got a little. Uh, they had like a map that they're passing out. Like I guess they recently had like a, a pub crawl event to all oh, of them. Oh, nice. But it was like Rin picked it up and we were looking at it and like I was amazed. There was like twelve to thirteen like really dope breweries that you Damn. can read a little bit of like bio on and stuff. And I was like, <clears throat> just because Oklahoma City's not a huge place. It's yeah. Not, it's like you know, like I think of it as kind of like a bigger a slightly bigger amarillo yeah, yeah like. exactly for sure for and sure so like we were like to see all those different breweries there i was like man they're fucking beer games on point but of course you know just not that long ago oklahoma had dog shit beer <laughs> and now it's like it has good beer and it's fucking got medical weed so <laughs> yeah they fucking step it up yeah, amarillo's coming up or oklahoma's it, coming up hard yeah well it's just like even here man i mean what five years ago all the, the only brewery was what the big Texan. I mean, they weren't even really doing. They were doing kit beers. What? Because this is what somebody told me. Like when <clears throat> Big Texan first started doing like their brewery program, quote unquote, they were doing like kit beers. They were getting like they'd go to the brew shop and buy like uh, an IPA uh, kit or something mm. like that, and they'd brew it and sell it. But it was like not like a legit like yeah, from it scratch me. recipe. Okay. But huh. From what I understand now, they're they're doing their own thing. They're doing it legit. Yeah. They probably hired someone to come be a brewmaster and stuff. I actually, I dude, I like Big Texans beers, man. I've never had any of them, honestly. Dude, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good, and it's so fucking cheap. Like you can get a flight of four for six dollars, or you can get all the beers for twelve dollars. Huh. And they're in like little, I think four ounce pours. Yeah, I mean, like we went to the Big Texan parking lot recently when the Rick Mobile was there. Oh yeah, yeah. But I haven't been in Big Texan since I went for my birthday when I was probably like sixteen or fifteen or something like that. It's so. it's still not too much different, but the bar is pretty cool, man. You and then you can buy a growler and fill it up for like if you what, buy $15? if you if you buy a growler for seventeen dollars, they fill it up with whatever you want for free. Yeah, seventeen so they hook it up. fucking dollars. Well, that I mean that yeah. it's cheap. That's why we have the fucking big Texan growlers because it's yeah, cheap as fuck. Like so so cheap. <laughs> well, I mean, it's also cool to like spread it around, you know, like to go support what Amarillo is trying to do. I mean, yeah. not six car, but definitely on the set. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I, I legit have not been to six car dude, since you yeah, stopped working. Either, so many people tell me that. Like, I recently did a podcast. Because, I mean, generally, this is the only podcast I've ever done. Recently, somebody reached out to me to do their podcast, which was a totally different thing. It was like this dude, Jason Boyette, who writes who, – who, he, when we do, like, articles in Amarillo Magazine and shit, he usually writes our, our piece for us. And he's a really great writer, and he always really, like, quotes us warmly and, like, you know, like, represents us really well. He has this podcast called Hey Amarillo, which I think it's oh, yeah, fairly popular. Yeah, yeah. 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 He reached out to me like just before the Christmas break and was like, "Hey man, I've been wanting to get you on since I started this. You know, are you, I know you're busy. But would you come do it?" So like, there was a Monday where I went over there and fucking we banged one out. And like, one he had like it was real like he had questions she, she he was said. gonna answer me and sh- ask me and shit. And then uh, one of his questions was like, "When's the last time you went to the Big Texan?" And I'm like, "Fuck, dude, I don't even know." And then we segued into a part where we're talking about six car because he wanted to kind of like air that shit out a little bit. And even he was like, he's like, you know, I was a regular when you were there, and I haven't been back since. And I was like, man, so many people tell me that shit. Yeah, I haven't even stepped foot into that place since I then. Mean, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't keep track of it too much. Like occasionally, Rand will go look at the Facebook or the Instagram, and be like, oh, they're doing this or that. Because I do I, still follow them on Instagram. See, I blocked them so they wouldn't fucking try to <laughs> yeah. fucking bite Jack my shit. shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, our friend Krishana still bakes over there, and she fucking hates it. But like. She'll occasionally tell us what's going on over there about, like, them just being stupid as fuck or whatever. And, uh, like, she's a really talented baker. It sucks she's still there. Ren's trying to open up a a vegan bake. We're trying to open up a vegan bakery slash, like, coffee shop thing. Sick. And, uh, yeah, we're trying to get a poacher and get her to come work for us. But Yeah, because you guys should have bought a vacation. Dude. I, <laughs> I know, I know. You already told the fuck. Yeah. Man. I wish that would have happened, too. Much too. Debt. 
I would have. I wish that would have happened. Uh, fucking me too, man. Fucking stupid ass investors, man. Yeah, I, I fucking still get. So it's just gone now. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. From what I understand, and like I, like I said this on that other podcast. Yeah, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, but from what I heard from the you know the people we know that work there and shit, they yeah. were like, you know, Amy and Roman <laughs> sold it to this guy. And like with best intentions, and I think that that guy was like he has a coffee shop in Lubbock or something like that, and he thought of Evocation was just like a glorified showpiece for the roastery, and he was more focused on his brand in Lubbock, and so he just wanted to shut the the Coulter shop down and just like move the roastery to Lubbock and just sell the shit online because he didn't really feel like paying for you know another storefront in Amarillo that he wasn't in a market he didn't really give a shit about. Crazy. I also heard that dude didn't pay a single fucking invoice from the time he took over till they closed. So they were like, Rin and I looked at how what it would be like to maybe pop in there and try to take over and try to like, like pull it back on course. But dude, it was so far in debt and shit that like we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't do anything. Just you know? too far gone, not even worth it. So oh, yeah. were they just like banking on that guy to pay his half or what? Like, no, like just he just didn't pay like little things, man. Like he didn't pay. You know, Amy and Roman were oblivious to it because they. Roman went to Yale, you know. They don't know anything about it. They're living in, like, the East Coast now. They kept a small part of the business for themselves. And th- this guy was, was running it, and, and the staff was working and shit. But he just wouldn't pay, like, you know, he didn't, like, the, were, mm. their distributor from where they get their green coffee beans from. He never paid for that. They were, like, fucking crazy debt with that Jesus. company. And then, like, even, like, Unifirst and shit like that. Like, little things, you know, just little shit that you ha- upkeep, you know. And yeah. it's, like... So by the time it was all said and done, they're closing the doors. Like, dude, somebody's gonna get hit with a bunch of debt that has to be paid. I don't know who's gonna pay it because I don't <laughs> see that dude paying shit. Sure. Yeah, but Jesus, it's a bummer for sure, man. So they have a coffee shop in Lubbock. Is it an evocation or is it called something different? It's called what the fuck, Sugar Browns or some shit like that. Is it the one in Tech Terrace? Uh, it's called. Uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I know exactly what it is. They and just opened up a new one. It's and like, their coffee is really good. They opened up a new one, uh, in it's called something different, but I think it's by Sugar Browns. But it's it's in a different building. Like it's in like a hotel, or it's in like maybe what you're talking about. Oh, the one in the hotel is really fucking good too. Downtown. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. I fucking don't go to Lubbock. J and B. No. J and B is the one that I'm talking about. Um, what is that one downtown? J and B's fire, dude. The one downtown, so they renovated this. Basically, it's it's exactly like the Herring Hotel downtown here. Yeah, they renovated the whole thing though, made the first two floors apartments. The rest is a hotel. The whole lobby has a brewery in like one third of it, a coffee shop in one third of it, and a like cafe in the, like another third of it. It's such a good fucking idea. Yeah, downtown yeah. Lubbock's fucking dead, so there it's a little weird. It would work out really good here, but the Herring Hotel here is in a super bad spot. Yeah, it's a little past where people want to go downtown. Yeah, yeah. Also, people don't support downtown in Amarillo. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, fucking Luis and Jackson and like the whole Proud Crowd crew worked a fucking Christmas party at the Herring Hotel this like oh, last yeah. week. I saw, I think I saw stuff on Clark's story. For yeah. That shit or I texted Luis. I was like, yo, you know that building's full of asbestos, right? Are you guys like good? And he was like, yeah, we're just chilling. I was like, you should for sure be in some sort of suits. If if you go on a, a, a fucking tour of that place, they make you wear a hazmat suit. They do? I know, yeah. I know Jared did a photo tour of that place, but he never told me anything about having to. You got to wear like a fucking suit or at least like a fucking gas mask. Well, yeah, because a lot of the old shit, a lot of the old shit they painted back in the day with, is full of lead, so it fucks everything up. Well, yeah. not only that, yeah, like a lot of the overhead, um, I guess the shit they stuffed the over, yeah, overhead yeah. the ceilings with, yeah, yeah, has yeah that's asbestos where it's all, in it. Yeah, so yeah. that shit is super fucked up for you. And fucking yeah, so I guess this rich ass dude rented out like a whole. I I don't know. I guess I want to say the bottom floor, or maybe a specific floor for a fucking Christmas party. Okay, because, yeah, I saw, like, on, I think it was Clark's store or something like that. I saw yeah. them all at that party, all dressed up and shit, and I was like, where the fuck is this? Yeah, as at the fucking Herring Hotel. That's hilarious. Where you shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and they're opening up. So the whole time I was at Six Car, they were renovating that hotel across the street. I think it's going to be the Barfield or whatever, like, a, oh, yeah, like yeah, a Marriott yeah. project. Yeah. So I recently have seen some of the shit that's going into that, and, like, 
Dude, they're dumping all kinds of shit into this and like, like, looking for like a. I actually know the guy who took the chef job. It's a friend of mine named Joey, who left the country club to go over there. But uh, like, dude, I wanted I wanted to message him, and be like, dude, watch your back, man, because working for hotels, dude, especially a brand new hotel downtown. Yeah. Like they just did this with the embassy suites, you know, and like lured away a couple of dudes I know to go run the kitchen and like you know, then it's like there's just nobody there, dude. Like you know, yeah. like, like what are you gonna do with this? overhead and all this money that you're going to have to, it's like the six car thing, dude, like having so much overhead every month and then having this giant space and then like nobody's downtown to support it. Like, you know, like yeah. you're either really busy or you're really dead and you're really dead a lot more than you're busy. You know, yeah. that's going to be the same shit for them. That's what fucking blows my mind, man. It's like, stop making these bougie ass spots. Like put a fucking, I mean, not like a motel six, but like, Put fucking like a a normal motel downtown yeah. or something. Well, let, let me tell. Let me let me let me <laughs> put like butt a fucking, in with this. Uh, say a fits, look, fifty sixty dollar a night hotel downtown. Let me let me tell you this. <laughs> look how long the four horsemen went going. Still going, people, baby. Yeah, well, people <laughs> love that place. I thought they, I thought it closed down. No, no they, they, she they, came back. Oh, yeah. four four horsemen can't die, baby. God damn. I'm telling you, but that look at that fucking place, huh? Yeah, yeah, the, the Kiva, Kiva, the, the fucking horsemen. the horseman. Grant was bar back in there during the weekends, and like I don't know if he still is, but He's, uh, he still does from time to time. Yeah, one night he came, he like had to leave work. You know, we closed up at like eight thirty, and he was trying to get out to go there. And then the next day, we talked to him. He's like, he's like, bro, I watched fucking seven or eight fights get broke up last night. I go, what the <laughs> fuck? He's all, all these cowboys, man, they come in there and get drunk and just start fighting and shit. I'm like, yeah, I can see like one fight happening in a night or like two if there's like an event going on and there's a lot of fucking tension but yeah just people drinking and having a good time and the fucking seven fights break out it's like dude yeah. people have field of mccoy type have shit. literally a little scott you scooted in oh. on more. my bad people have literally gotten murdered in that parking lot jesus <laughs> and they're fuck. just like all right let's all right let's keep business going let's keep it let's, going man all right to the game. party's got to keep going all right that's that saturday's over We're ready for the next one you know what I mean? Like it's just like crazy, man. Like, and that's the kind of shit that gets popping in Emerald. Like that place makes money. I guarantee it. Oh yeah. But people are still trying to be like, "Oh, let's keep it bougie." It's like, nah, that's not what Emerald is about. I'm We're just sick of the bougie spots, man. Well, yeah, man. Know. We want that, you know, three dollar curtain light on a. If I if it's bougie, charge me three fifty. I've said you know? this so many times, and I'll say it again. Put a fucking sports bar in Town Square, you're gonna be a millionaire. We need a fucking spot that serves single slice pizza and beer. Boom. Those are the two things, yeah. bro. Yeah. Put a fucking sports bar in Town Square. You're gonna be banking, dude. That's fucking college kids, fucking hospital fucking workers, whatever the fuck, all those fucking workers and shit. You'll be banking. Yeah, you it. could still. If there's a sports bar not fucking Metropolitan where it's fucking nine dollars a beer, whatever the fuck, and Cask and Cork where it's nine dollars, or Synergy where it's nine fucking dollars, you open up a sports bar. Where it's like two fifty, three dollars a fucking beer. You got fucking TV, some pub food. You'll be fucking killing it, dude. Destroying it. Even if you open up like a dive bar. How do Honestly, you feel about that? If stuff? you had some, if you had all the variation of like a dive bar, a sports bar, the bougie shit, you just need all that variation close to each other, and then you get, and then you know, you maybe have like uh, variations of of the dive bar, a dive bar here, dive bar here. Sports bar, sports bar, you know? Yeah. As someone who's a business owner, what do you think about what I'm saying? I mean, I think Town Park or Town Square or whatever is kind of a weird thing out there. But uh, I definitely think if you did it right and you didn't have to pay. Because if you're charging X amount of money for your beer, your food, like that, that insinuates that your overhead is a certain point. Because to charge, to set your menu prices, you have to go about like what's your rent, what's your cost of goods, what's your... You know, what, like your alcohol, what's that cost? And so to, to yeah. sell it for a certain point and still make a profit, you have to get it for a certain amount, you know? So yeah, places like that, I mean, I think a, a dive sports bar and shit out there would be a good concept, but I don't know if anybody would be able to go and get that kind of, uh, like charge that kind of like what people are expecting in a sports bar, like a Hummers or something like that Yeah, out there because the overhead is going to be so high. You know, like I, th- I think if you had something that was like a standalone building, like, on Sansi right there down from there you know like when all that open shit yeah i think they would succeed you well, know well i could see like where their overhead be be so much where they would have to 
they could charge the lower prices, but they would have to keep the place bumping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and and if and if they had bad nights, like it wouldn't work out. You know what I mean? And eventually, you know, they they'd have to they'd go downhill. But like if you charge them low prices and that place was bumping every night, then yeah. you know you could make it pay off. Eventually, you know you're charging the three dollar compared to four dollars, which, which uh, the other places are charging. You know what I mean? It could keep you up if you're getting everybody in there every night. See, and that that this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm not expecting like if a bar were to open down there to be like R and R's fucking prices. I'm even saying like five dollars a beer. Yeah, like a Buffalo Wild Wings. For Five a- bucks a beer. You got TVs. You got Sunday ticket. Whatever the fuck people are in there trying to see. Five bucks a beer. You got a full liquor bar. I guarantee you're going to pack the house. Yeah. I mean, for the Even, most part. Like, my mom lives over there. She doesn't live in Town Square. She lives in that neighborhood right there. But she's like, we don't have any bars to go to because there's Metropolitan, there's Cask and Cork, there's Synergy. They're all expensive as fuck. And I'm not trying to do that. I guarantee if the prices were even cut in half, that'd be their go-to spot. True, because, like, Grayson was living over there, and he'd always tell me, like, I'd see him check in at fucking Jay's or whatever that place used to be that was, yeah, like, yeah. the fucking Dead Mouse Salad place, you know, that place. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing over there? He's all, bro, fucking, you know, name off <laughs> cheap drink prices and this and that. And it's like, and it's it's quasi close to that fucking yeah you know? so exactly he's like, it's like yeah that's that's the only spot <laughs> yeah so i mean shit i guess there's some validity to that i think but i definitely think that the whole i also think that greedy motherfucker greg mitchell needs to open a toot and totem in town square and he'll Ooh. fucking bank out out the ass <laughs> oh Ooh. for in, sure in town square though for sure <laughs> i've never met that dude or even seen him or whatever but so much so many people talk shit on that guy I just fucking know his son. His son's a fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> He's not ever listened to this shit. It's so it's shots all good. fired. <laughs> well, dude, if you look at what Town Square should be, it should be like a walkabout. So you should be able to walk down from your apartment, walk to a store, walk to yeah. dinner, walk to you know shops. I mean, if you look at all the things that they're trying to mimic from Fort Worth or Dallas or whatever you want to want to what you whatever you want to say they're trying to mimic. Yeah. Everything they're trying to mimic is where you can walk downstairs, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to the store. You don't even have to leave your town square. That's what exactly. it should be about. You should be able to go down to the fucking, go pick up fucking whatever you need from here. Yeah, the fact that there's not a fucking, at least a little market downstairs, people are fucking up, dude. Dude, I mean, I thought that was a, I thought that was one of the original, like, ideas between that thing. Like, you know, it's like you, they're supposed to have, like, their own self contain yeah. little little town out there exactly. exactly like a little fucking self-sustaining community almost where it's like so you can e- live here and, and fucking whatever you don't need to go, you don't need to go anywhere yeah so. even if it's not to totem just get a fucking market that sells beer sells snacks well, maybe pack you of know. snacks right there down at the the loop isn't it or just past the loop on sansi yeah yeah and, but that's and, the thing you and have fucking to and totem baby is it <laughs> yeah yeah of course next door that's so funny to me. <laughs> he speaking loves that of, shit. Dude, speaking of that shit, uh, okay, so you know on Coulter, Raising Cane's opened up two doors down from Chick-fil-A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was at Waterstill the other night filling up the jugs and shit for the house, and I didn't realize that thing they were building next to Waterstill on George is a fucking oh, Raising fuck Cane's. Oh, yeah, Cane's, dude. <laughs> I'm fucking psyched that there's one closer to my house. <laughs> Anytime, Vicky will be like, I want Cane's. I'm just like, God fucking damn it, dude. <laughs> I gotta go Stretch. all the way to fucking Coulter and shit. Now it's now it's right there, man. Fucking first world problems. Isn't didn't that Taco Bueno on Bell shut down? Yeah, that's and a, you know what it's gonna be? A tune totem. <laughs> a tune totem. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Down the street from a fucking tune totem. I know, dude. Like, I was bummed out when Taco Bueno closed down. Like, we didn't go there very often, but you know, it wasn't terrible. Like, whenever we travel, we'll go eat. Like, especially if we go to the wet towards the west coast. We always go, like, we'll travel somewhere, go eat somewhere, like, really nice, like, you know, tasting menu top type shit, and then go drink or whatever. But then the next morning when we're getting ready to leave and shit, we always fucking lock in a Del Taco on the way out, dude, because it's for sure for a fucking, for a fast food joint, you know, <laughs> dude, it's on point. They do the fucking Beyond Meat, don't they? Yeah, yeah. just recently. We, we've tried it recently. It's fucking good, dude. Like, I think Impossible's better than Beyond as far as, like, you're getting into, the, like, the alternative burgers. Yeah. But... The, the beyond shit at 
that Del Taco was pretty fire. Taco Bell's about to start doing the fucking impossible shit. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I yeah. mean, dude. Uh, For I, all their shit. I know that, uh, dude. And, like, so Burger King. Uh, yeah, yeah, did the impossible. They did the impossible, and then they had their biggest quarter in 10 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah, fucking that's crazy. Impressive. So a lot of people are talking shit on, like, impossible or beyond because it's like, people are like, we don't fucking know what's in it. And I'm like, yeah, but it all comes from plants. If some people are like, well, it's monocropped, you know, fucking like a, you know, like GMO shit. And like, you know, uh, but a lot of that shit isn't, isn't GMO shit. And it's like people freak out on impossible because they have this shit called heme, which is like a vegetable hemoglobin thing that they have in there. That's like what makes it kind of bleed. looks like it's bleeding. Yeah. But it's all plant based, dude. Like people are freaking out. Like people are like, people are just like, I don't get it. I'm not going to eat it. It's fake meat. It's <laughs> lab grown. Well, and I'm like, yeah, but it comes from plants. And like, listen, if you're eating a Burger King and you're eating a burger, you're eating fake meat either way. Yeah, true. Okay, so start off with that. You're so, probably eating something better than whatever the fuck you're eating in a big, in a Whopper or Big Mac or any of that shit. I fucking eat it, and hey, it's better than eating pink slime. You know, like yeah. <laughs> whatever. At least you know it's fucking all plants. It's all Dude, good. I had some friends that worked in Arby's, worked at Arby's back in the pink slime days, and I would hear some <laughs> fucking freaky stories they're like. Like, yeah, bro, that shit you get on a beef and cheddar, it starts its life in a tube that we spray onto a fucking cookie sheet and spread out and bake it off, and it makes that mm-hmm. meat. Of course. What? Yeah. <laughs> of course. I think they've gotten away from that in the last decade That's or so. That's fucking insane. But yeah, dude, those fucking two for five beef and cheddars, man, that shit's on a budget, bro. There's a margin there. Still fire, baby. <laughs> yeah. No uh, so good as fuck. But. I do know <laughs> that fucking all of Subway's meat is all the same meat and it's just dyed and flavored to taste like whatever it is. Like it starts out as a block and they dye it and flavor it to specifically taste like whatever the fuck it's I supposed to be. I can see that. Yeah. Seems about right. So I don't either. Dude, or I do because it's also good. Dude, uh, <laughs> whenever I lived in Austin, I lived in Austin for like seven years back in the early 2000s. And uh, one of my jobs was like I wor- started working at the subway and I ended up becoming a manager of like these three subways that were all in the campus district. Like, 29th, 24th, and Dobie Mall. Right there, right there in the drag on off Guadalupe. Yeah. And dude, uh so much fucked up shit happened while I was working at these subways. Uh so much of it is story worthy. <laughs> like one time this is like right when that fucking dude, uh that pedophile Jared was like their big oh, spokesperson. Yeah. <laughs> so one day my boss my, about that the, guy. my boss was this owner guy who was like like I don't know if he was Vietnamese or Laotian or what. But he would call me up at like 6 in the morning, and I'd answer the phone. He'd be like, Scott, this Bill. And I was like, what's up, Bill? He's like, I need you to get to the store right away. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, we have Jared coming into all three of your stores today. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we go in, we open up, and then like a team, a PR team shows up with this fucking douchebag. And dude, he's like <laughs> the most awkward, Sick. giant cocksucker I've ever seen in my life. And uh, it's a whole fucking thing with this guy trying to, and then I had to go deal with it in three different stories. They'd film a little thing, have him like fucking shaking hands, jerking people off, and then <laughs> move to a different story. And then it's so funny that later on that dude comes out uh, as a fucking, you know, child porn guy or whatever. And then on another subject of Subway, I worked at one in the Adobe Mall, and I, like the, it was like a rundown mall. They've re, They've knocked it down and revamped it in this whole student center now, but... Back then, it had, like, a movie theater that would show, like, 3D pornos and shit and a couple, like, a knife shop and, like, a little anime store and miscellaneous shit. But most of it was closed down and vacant except for, like, a few things in the food court. But the only bathroom you could go to was – you know how a mall is, right? Yeah, Like, it's, like, there's a fucking – there's a bathroom area that that everybody that works at the mall uses and shit. Which is so fucked. Dude, Dude, it was so – and, dude, this place was, like, right there on the drag. You know, like, this is, like, early, early 2000s Austin before, like, a lot of shit had gotten gentrified. And so right there in MLK, and dude, like on, dude, I could probably think of like four or five different occasions. Like I noticed it one time I was in there fucking taking a shit in the bathroom. And I look on the wall in the stall and there's fucking dried cum and shit everywhere. <laughs> like, Jesus and it's like, Christ. just fucking like, just, it's gross. You can, It smells and that weird smell. And you're like, okay. And then the people would, these bums would write down names and times and somebody else would come in there and write and like check. And like, they would, they were like sitting at meeting times and shit. And I was like, I was like, this is the weirdest fucking thing. And then one time I walked in there and there's these two bums just fucking the shit out of each other at, right there. Not even in the stall. Like you walk in the bathroom and it's just like you see two massive amounts of clothes like gyrating together. You know, they're all they're wearing everything they fucking own and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, I, the first time it happened, I was like, what the fuck? Ran out, was freaked out, laughing my ass off. 
telling all my staff about it. And then I had no idea that I would experience that like four or five more times in my in my time there, dude. Damn! So that was like the fucking soup kitchen right there. Straight huh? up, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> they're just Christ. having the soup kitchen up in the bathroom. <laughs> Dirty Bob and the boys. Are like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, that's wild, bro. I didn't know. I didn't know hobos just like turned gay that hard, though. You know what I mean, dude? It's a crime of necessity. I think. I think. I it's guess like, so, it's man. Like, it's I'm like, gonna. It's like prison, you know. Like I just got to bust, man. Yeah, and straight I, up. And you're here, and I'm here, so let's bust in each other. Dude, Christian showed me this shit one time on Instagram. He followed some fucked up page, and it was like a video somebody had taken, and these two dudes were like boofing meth up each other's asses, like behind a building and shit. And it's like, do you see dudes hitting the fucking? fucking pipe and shit then blow it up the dude's ass oh so they're like shotgun and meth up the guy's butthole damn yeah. dude you got a lot of veins in your butthole so i'm sure he is high as fuck <laughs> dude if you if you fucking shotgun meth up in my butthole i'd overdose God damn it. i would die i mean either uh, probably all of ours i don't think we've none of us have ever done meth <laughs> all right. so dude i bet you if you if your tolerance is so hard against meth that you got to shotgun it up your butthole like that's a that's the next level kind of thing man for real jesus yeah. fucking christ but we digress <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about before i took us on that yo we're, we're talking about bu- uh, hobos butt fucking each yeah. other for sure i don't know that. man i think we might have to end the podcast <laughs> no, no, that, no, jesus oh, mic, mic drop on that guy <laughs> it's like well this is episode 40 this is what you wanted huh <laughs> You wanted a you wanted a real forty podcast. You talk about hobos butt podcast. fucking. That's about just about appropriate as it can get. Yeah, I, oh, I didn't mean to go shit, that man. way. I was originally hey. just trying to badmouth Jared, but uh, that you're, shit was. You're doing uh, doing the Lord's work over here. You are, man. You're you're filling in for Josh nicely. <laughs> yeah, that's about a Josh statement. Yeah, hobos um, butt fucking each other. How about how about I know, I know I've said this before, but how about how many bums there are in San Francisco where you gotta have an app? That marks where bums have been shitting on the ground and stuff. That's insane. Yeah. What's it called, dude? I don't know. Can you look up app app in San Francisco that marks where bums have pooped? That's funny on two levels because San Francisco being like the Silicon Valley tech hub and shit, all these venture capitalists, all these people that go there trying to get their app or their, their <laughs> thing made, and somebody's like, yo, I got this next level shit for you guys. Snap. No, it, it's not called Snap Crap. <laughs> Is that what it really says? I don't know. Oh, it does say Snap Crap I right there. I swear to fuck if it's called Snap Crap, the podcast is over. Dude. It says Snap Crap. All right, that's it. This is episode oh 40. My God. That's it. <laughs> snap Crap allows people to report feces found on that's San Francisco it, streets. The free app allows users to take photographs of feces on sidewalks and streets and deliver an alert to the city's public waste department. <laughs> oh, they're trying to alert the city city to come pick up the poo poo. Well, we can't go up from there, man. This is uh, that's we have, it. We, we, we got to stop now. <laughs> it's dude. called fucking snap crap. I'm done, snap dude. I'm done. Crap. I have nothing else to say. And you, ha- and you take a picture of the poo poo. I have no desire. To and then you tag it on your map. Anymore. But what app? What app do you download to take a picture of the poop, the same poop, but have it rated in a scale where it's like, oh, like sure this is a really it. nice coiler right here. You know? Oh <laughs> yeah, in the fuck they got the old fucking uh, Dairy Queen right here. I'm pissed, dude. Oh, dude, they actually got legit pictures of doo doo, huh? I'm fucking pissed. Oh, that's human feces. <laughs> wow. Just, I'm, dude, I'm pissed off. Just dookie, huh? Oh, they got uh, I, syringe too. Tight. They got a syringe app too. Wow. I'm pissed. Snap. R.I.P. Dookie. Snap crap. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Snap fucking crap, man. Oh, man. Yeah, man, it's crazy how, like, San Francisco's so liberal, but they're so gentrified, pushing everybody out. <laughs> oh, my God. Look wow. At the dude, San Francisco's out here in fucking 3,020, bro. I have oh, a They're lot. on the next level. I have a lot to do tomorrow to put all this shit on the podcast. No pun intended. And yeah, you're going to have to put a lot of shit on the podcast, bud. Oh, man. We got visual aids out the ass. Wow, dude. That's how bad it is, now, like, dude. downtown. Well, dude, when I was in San Francisco this past year, um, two, of my, crap. two of my buddies got rent cars Two of my buddies got their cars broken into. Really? And all their shit stolen. Dude, Ren and I were just in San Francisco. Like, we went out for a trip with Benny Key to the produce field. Then we went and spent 
a couple days in San Francisco, went to Manresa and shit. And, dude, I fucking actually fell in love, dude. I had a great time. And we were only in, like, San Francisco, like, the city proper for, like, a day. But, dude, we had a fucking blast, dude. I did so much cool shit. Oh, it, it's a cool place. But I'm just saying, like, my buddies got their shit broken into from parking downtown, you know? That's I, like, real, is you it? Know? Is that real? No. No, uh, it's, uh, it's super fake. <laughs> it's closed down, man. It's I'm taking a skin. tour out there to personally shit on Alcatraz. Wow, man! Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I man. honestly, I honestly want to end the podcast. Let's do it. Tired? <laughs> we can't fucking. There's nowhere we can go from Snap Crap, dude. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with Snap Crap. We can't get better than Snap Crap. That that was good, man. We peaked. Jesus fuck. Did man. we peak, bud? <laughs> Yeah, we peaked, dude. All right. Well, uh, I'll take over Josh's Instagram handle, and I'll make it up off the top of the head. Um, kitchen wow, poop. Kitchen choking. poop soup. He choked. Kitchen no, I was poop singing. Soup. <laughs> kitchen poop soup at. Wait, how does it go? How does an Instagram handle go? Follow me. I swear, if you at, think if you think the at goes at the end, you got a long <laughs> fucking road, bud. <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. Follow follow me at Dick. Follow, follow me at Tank Tickler. <laughs> <laughs> follow me at Dick how, Soup Poop. See how easy it is. Follow me at Tank Tickler sixty nine. Right. Oh, that's what it is. I needed the number. There you go, Josh. Bum Boof six six six. Taint Tickler. <laughs> 69. Josh would approve that one. I know he would. I Fo- agree. Follow me at... Follow, follow me at Fap Attacker 89 <laughs> I like that one. And uh, as always, hit up thegrowlerpod.com for everything that you want to see uh, podcast-wise. Yellowcitystreetfood.com. Yo. Got all the menus and all the goodies up there. Got the and gift cards on there. Yeah, gift cards. And hit up the coldcuts.com. Um, we got a few hoodies left. We got a few crew necks left. I need to cop one of those for sure. Yeah. You do, I'm man. Slipping right now. We can make that happen. And soon hey. soon to come, Fap Snap is going to be an app. Yeah. Well, Fap you, Snap. You take pictures of people beating off in public in the hey, airport. Hey, it'll just be the, just people <laughs> busting nuts on the sidewalk. I guarantee there'd be a market. <laughs> hey, just watch out, people busting nuts on the sidewalk all day. Ah, shit, man. Or it's just like a collective, like, hey, if you got a bust nut, just bust it on here. God damn it. <laughs> Post a good spot for people to bust nuts. Yeah, at. and then you just get a fucking whole, like, it looks like a giant loogie. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're cut off, dude. <laughs> we went dark. That's it, man. We went we, we went south <laughs> is what we did. Scott, thanks for coming, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Get well, Josh. This has been episode you, 40 Woo! of the Growler Pod. Thank you, guys. Uh, next episode will be in 2020, baby. Happy New Year's to everybody. Yeah. Everybody be safe. Don't fucking drink and drive. Danny, unlock the door. Enjoy your life. Yeah.